Damn Uno Knight and I'm back now. Damn. Okay, we finally. Oh, sorry about that. My chair squeaking. Anyways, the thing is, uh, we finally got Velana's skills here. All right. So we're gonna be talking about her, and let me just say this straight up. Uh, she's very good on paper. However, she does have some drawbacks. Um, the main thing to look at is her ultimate, which is undeniably the strongest now we have in the game, topping Talia by miles. All right. Uh, we'll get into the calculations in a bit very quickly, right? Okay, so when it comes to Velana, she is a warrior, so that means she is a melee unit. Uh, right off the bat, I'm expecting a decent defense, hopefully, you know, honestly, with her sustain on her kit, at least 15k, right? 15k and I'm happy. Uh, when it comes to attack, um, uh, I'm expecting something kind of mid, like 60k, alright? But regardless, you know, we'll take it, right? Because she has so much multipliers, <laughs> one of the highest we have in the game, rivaling even Iomis. Good thing about Ayame is that she has the highest attack and also one of the highest damage multipliers in the entire game, which is absolutely bonkers, right? So straight into it, we'll start off with their artifact. Uh, crit damage increases by 12%. Now it does seem lackluster a bit, but attack plus 10% is really bad. I uh, Maybe a misunderstanding that. Anyways, so let's say, assuming we have legendary, and with a melee unit, her crit damage will be rough for somewhere around the mid 60s to high 80s, alright? Now we will lowball, just for this one. We will assume legendary plus and level 181 Vilana for our testing, right? For our calculations. Now, for this one, legendary plus, which is this upgrade 3, 36%, assuming a low, how do I say this? A low crit damage of like 60 something percent, right? Let's just round it up to 100% when you add this crit damage increase, so it makes our calculations a lot easier. Crit damage will be times 2. Alright, we'll be using that as our basis. Now, let's start off with our passive. All of our attacks are dealt as critical hits against bleeding enemies, which is the basis of her kit. Literally, all of her skills require enemies to be bleeding. So, keep in mind that this does not mean that her life la sorry, lifesteal is increased by 30% against all units. This only means that against the bleeding uh, enemies, her life steal, in life steal increases, and her and her crits will be guaranteed, right? So carrying on, summons a sword which deals damage equal to 2.5 meter radius. Now, what this reminds me of is the circle of Ayame's ultimate. So if you have Ayame, expect it to be somewhere like that, right? Because it's a 2.5 meter circle. Or if you don't, or if you don't know how to visualize that. It's actually kind of big, but then not that big, if that makes sense, right? So if you think about it, this is a two meter straight area. Two meter is the width of Mephi's beam. So if you have Mephi, which I assume you have, imagine the width of that times 2.5. And that will be the diameter, okay? Diameter, not radius of Vilana's like circle, right? Of this thing. It's important to keep that in mind because this is the same for her soaring hatred which is very very vital to her kit right so again we'll be using level 181 let's just calculate the damage for this very quickly trusty calculator 160 percent additional damage so 160 percent plus 120 280 percent it's nothing it's not a lot but then it is an aoe skill we know it's aoe because you know because of the three swords here. Uh, for context, Haru, if you think Haru, she's a very single target based unit, right? This one sword icon means it is a single target skill, right? Uh, this blob of whatever that is, just means it's a damage over time skill, right? So right off the bat, you can see that she has a lot of skills that require bleeding, but only one thing that actually does damage over time. Keep in mind, her ult also does that. But then we just, it's just a bit confusing because her main text here says it opens wounds. But then the level 201 skill says it's a bleeding damage. So it's like my head's frazzled, all right? I'm not even going to think about that. We'll still do the calculations though because with or without the bleed, it's, it's pretty strong, okay? Now let's get into Soaring Hatred. So 110% of attack in 2.5 2 meter radius and making the target bleed, again, very vital. 50. So this thing only lasts 12 seconds, but again, we are going to assume level 181. So this will last 14 seconds or seven turns. That's around like 3.5 attacks, something like that, right? Or four attacks. So again, very quick calculation. 
So 60, this is 60 times seven, again, because it's every two seconds, 60% damage times seven is 420%. Plus 130, this is 550% damage, which is really good for an AOE skill, <laughs> all right? That's a lot, that's a lot of damage, right? So again, really good. Now let's move on to Wild Dance. Slashes at the nearest and moves forward in a range of five meter length and 180 degree angle. So it's the nearest enemy, five meter length. This is the one that confuses me. Does that mean, she, so it's a lunge, but then does it like pierce something like that? Does she go through the enemy? This one I'm not very sure of, but then we'll still check the calculation because it does seem like a lot of damage. One thing we do know though, is that it is definitely an AOE because of the three swords, right? So 220%, oh, it's very straightforward. 220 plus 140. Uh, it's not a lot of damage on her active, but then given the fact that it's an AOE, it's it's okay, I guess. Don't expect Mephi levels of damage with this, just because with Mephi, 380% plus shred of 15% is, uh, yeah, that's just, that's tough. And it seems like it's only a single target stun, but I mean, you know, any stun is good, I guess. We'll take it, right? Only problem is that it's two seconds, but keep in mind that if you time this right, you will be able to interfere an enemy cycle. Uh, if you're not familiar, each character has its own different cycle. And if you know the enemy that you're dealing with, if you interrupt the start of their cycle, they will skip the next turn as well. All right, I don't know how to explain it. Just think, uh, just imagine Haru is gonna normal attack now and she will use a sub skill in the next turn. If you interrupt her normal attack, the first attack, she won't, she won't like not attack the next turn, but then she will skip the skill, if that makes sense. All right, just replay that if you, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, the highlight of this unit is actually her ultimate. All right, because we've been hyping Tally up so much as the unit with the highest full screen ult damage. Just because, okay, we'll check it over here. So 310% with a battery plus 225%, 535%. This thing just completely eclipses that. It's like, it's not even close. Now in terms of burst, Talia still will beat it. But then bro, if you think about it, are you gonna have Talia's artifact at origin? Yeah, I don't think so. Does this mean Talia is a bad unit? Not even, all right? Talia is not mainly used for her ult. It's just nice to have, all right? Because it does a lot of damage. Anyways, right off the bat, again, we will assume level 181. So we will, we will use the level two ultimate, right? Because at this stage of the game, that's probably what you guys have. So, one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of these damages actually, uh, these damage over time, these dots, they do not crit. Okay, I asked the Discord, they said yes, and then they said they're not sure. So I tested it myself, IMF for like a solid 10 minutes. Yeah, not a single bleed like crit, so, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure it doesn't crit. Anyways, so just imagine everything we've calculated so far, times two if the unit is bleeding, but then again, it's not consistent damage, so we just looked at the straight multipliers, which is it's just crazy, bro. We didn't take into account the crit yet, right? We only took into account the second like second condition, which is bleeding. Now again, we're not 100% sure if this is a bleed, but then it cannot be cured, bro, which is like nuts because I think that's a future proof. I don't even know how you're meant to cleanse it. You can cleanse it because it's a debuff, but anyways. Let's get straight into the calculations, right? Again, level two, ultimate, 260%, this is 420% right off the bat, right? So, what the, that's so much damage. If you have it level three, this is already, even without all these multipliers, this is already the same amount of damage as Naya's ultimate at the same level. But keep in mind that Naya also has like other things going for her, so we're not gonna be talking about that, right? So, two seconds for 12 seconds this is going to change to 60 so it's 60 times 6 right off the bat it's 360 percent crazy and then we add the 260 plus 160 780 percent damage all right but then keep in mind that this second effect will only happen if the enemy is bleeding so again we'll use crit damage multiplier times two 15, 6. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Let me just fix that very quickly. So again, 260 times, because bleed doesn't crit, right? It will be 260 plus 160. So plus times two, 840, and we add the bleed damage, 360%. 12 
1200%. That is the highest multiplier we have in the entire game, assuming all the conditions are met. So yes, on paper, she has undoubtedly the highest <laughs> um, damage in the game when it comes to a full screen ult because Talia's would be 535, but then assuming a crit times two. So yeah. Keep in mind though, that as a burst attack, Talia's would still be stronger but then the drawbacks of Talia's ult are one she has low accuracy and second you need it to be high ascension right her artifact so yeah so keep in mind again that it is very hard to get all these secondary effects just because she needs to be targeting a bleeding enemy which now we have Ayame in question because she has three abilities she has the most bleeds available in the game three abilities with her ultimate her active and one sub skill right this one doesn't this is just a different damage over time it's an encroached area okay so i'm as really okay as a unit but then now she's like a lot stronger just because of Vilana. okay so again another unit jacqueline oh she actually she looks like Vilana. i don't know if it's just me it's probably just me but whatever they look the same to me Anyway, so Jacqueline Striker, highest crit rate in the game, so she's already a good unit by herself. We don't need to talk about it. But her only bleed is from her main. I th I used to think that her ult also does bleed. Just actually don't check. Yeah, it doesn't do bleed. So it's only her active. Now this is basically like a Mephi ult. Sorry, Mephi active, but then just a bit thinner because it's 1.8 meters. Uh, but then the only thing is Mephi's beam is like infinite kind of in terms of length and just a bit thicker by like 0.2 meters right so this is still a good skill and fix bleed the other unit that we have is Haru but then again she only has like one skill that does bleed which is the spinning dagger so yeah this is the only drawback of Velana. current stage of the game we do not have enough units that do bleed because if you don't have Ayame or a decent Jacqueline. Velana is not going to be as good as you expect her to. However, even without the bleed, her kit is already really good. However, it also poses the question, why not just use characters such as Mephi instead if you don't have these other things that make Velana a good unit? Now, keep in mind, things will change because we do not have her out yet. But on paper, yes, she is a really good unit. Just a matter of, mm, I don't know. I will still pull for her 100% because my undergate is lacking, so... If, you, if you're struggling with Undead Gate, Velana will definitely help you out with that. Just because if you pair her with uh, Rebecca with the increased dot damage, yeah. You're going to be doing a lot of damage. <laughs> okay? And Jacqueline as well. In terms of normal content though, I'm not really sure if I can use her yet. Just because... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'll still pull for her. I'll get her to Eternal Plus, right? Because I need more units Eternal Plus. <laughs> okay? All right, so if that was okay with you guys, if you like that analysis, please do consider subscribing because it helps us both. I'll be able to pump out more videos like this and you'll be able to keep up with that, right? So again, guys, we do have a technical discord. So if you have any questions, we do have a lovely community and we'd want you to be part of it. All right, so it's been Uno Night and I'll see you in the next one.